Gemix platform consists of Gemix Framework and Gemix Studio, a set of dev tools that steps up your developer experience and simplifies interacting with Gemix and Spring. In this video, we'll talk about the key studio features that Gemix provides. Once we create a new project, we'll be greeted by the welcome screen. It includes several useful resource links that could guide our way to success in Gemix. The Gemix tree on the left organizes files into logical sections and provides quick access to Gemix docs and other materials, including the welcome screen, uh, Gradle configuration, and other project-related configurations. The most important element of this panel is the plus sign. It allows us to generate common components in Gemix or Spring projects from entities and repositories to integration tests all from one place. All these actions are also available in the project tab as well. Let's say we want to create a manager entity. We can do that in three different ways. Let's do that from the plus sign. We'll name it in the wizard and click OK. Right after creation, Gemix Studio will show us the entity designer view of our code. Here, we can change our entity, for example, add a simple attribute or add validations to your attribute, like so. Or you can also create an associated attribute along its inverse attribute and all that without changing context. As we can see, we have them all in our code. From here, we can create their views uh, or in other words, the entity's presentation. For now, the view tab of our entity is empty, so let's create them. The template provides an option to create a list and detail view. Let's create both. The wizard allows us to choose the table actions that we'll have. In this case, we'll see uh, three buttons, uh, create, edit, and remove. Here, we'll choose the attributes we'll see in the list view, uh, then the detail view. If you want, you can change the name of the views here. It will change the titles we have in the messages properties file as well as in the menu XML file that shows the title in the sidebar. Now we have two views and two pairs of files. Each has a controller where we write our business logic and an XML file that describes the visual components of the view. In Gemix tab, they're put together under the corresponding view although they're both in different folders. Though, what if I forgot to add an attribute or I want to add one in an existing view? We can, of course, add it manually to our XML file. Studio will hand the fields of its corresponding entity, or we can add it from the entity designer. This is how our application looks like so far. Let's say we want to add a visual component. For example, a button to display user count in the manager list view. First, let's create the visual part in the descriptor. To the right, we see Gemix UI tab that contains all the components we already have in the descriptor. We can change the target element by clicking on them in the tree. As always, there are a few ways you can create a component. We can simply search for the component we want to add, and here we have it. Once we choose it as our target element, we can add its properties. The palette is also context dependent based on the scope you're in. So we don't even have to remember all the available properties for this component. So we just created a button, but it doesn't do anything just yet. Let's do something about that. Each component can have handlers where we'll write its business logic. We can add them from the handler tab. 
we'll add a click event for our button and here we'll write our code. We can use Gemix code snippets that aggregates useful code parts that can always come in handy when we're working on an enterprise project and we're free to change it accordingly to our needs. Well, how about we extract this part to a separate service? We'll create a new Spring Bean and paste our code. Now we can get back to our handler and inject our service into the method. Beside classes, we can inject components we created in the descriptor file. And that's it. We can now launch our project. Once we run our application, we'll see the database migration tool launching. This means that Gemix automatically generates a database migration script every time your data model changes. You can see which change logs we have generated in the preview window. So let's confirm and move on. And there we have both of our list and detail views, but apparently I forgot to add the text of the button. Gemix has got my back with such a thing as hot deploy that rebuilds your project on the fly. So let's see. So let's type the name of the button and move it last then press on common s so as we can see hot deploy was successfully triggered and let's get back to our window we've added the text and without rerunning our project we can see the result right away all right so we have our application what's next we can use Jamix studio to deploy it just as well let's find the deployment tab here we can test it in the cloud and Gemix Studio also helps you build a Docker file so you don't even need to think about best practices. This way, we've seen some of the main features that make writing code in Java more enjoyable. That's all for today. Consider liking if you find this video useful and subscribe for more content. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments or contact us through social media. Links in the description below. See you on the next video.